Hi, welcome to another episode of Hot Takes. You think it's hard getting to see a doctor now? <laughs> it's about to get a lot harder. A lot of doctors are resigning from the BMA, the British Medical Association, and they're resigning over a point of principle um, because they are actually disgusted with the council, the board of the BMA and its decision with regards to the safety of children. Now, we know Professor Hilary Cass spent four years or so looking into uh, the case for gender reassignment um, and, the, you know, the various medications involved, the surgeries, the mental health, the psychiatry behind and all that with regards to uh, the protection of children undergoing uh, gender reassignment and that sort of thing. This was a very, very well-researched, well described report. It went into sometimes excruciating detail. Cass knew what she was talking about and she presented this report that showed the absolute danger that the current um, treatments for these children was. It was very, very poor. She showed within her report that 97.5% of all children who went through this kind of gender reassignment weren't gender dysphoric. They were depressed, grieving, autistic, on the spectrum somewhere. There were underlying emotional problems, underlying family grievances. There was all sorts of things. These children weren't being psychiatrically or psychologically examined. And sometimes decisions were made not just by people who weren't um, senior doctors, weren't specialists or consultants in the field. Sometimes they were signed off by people who weren't even medically qualified. She said it was appalling and that lives were being unnecessarily wasted, that children were being herded through on fast track to sterility. And it was having deep, deep underlying problems that went down the line and probably were costing people their lives. Cass knew exactly what she put in her report. The general consensus among the population was very much aligned pro-Cass. However, the BMA, the 69-person uh, council, didn't like it. Obviously, the BMA has been corrupted from within by people with an agenda, and they objected to Cass's findings. They objected to her report and they voted to reject it. They voted to cast it aside and to carry on with the horrific abuse of children in Mengelian proportions. This is 1930s Germany and the concentration camps all over again by the BMA, the people who are supposed to protect and fix our medical problems. And they were creating them. They were abusing children by the coach load. They had no scientific reasoning for their rejection. It was just feelings. It was just opinions. There was nothing that they could say and point to that could possibly justify this rejection. They couldn't reject it on medical grounds. They couldn't reject it on scientific grounds. They couldn't reject it on psychological grounds. It's just that they had been infiltrated by the agenda-driven weirdos. This vocal but small minority, loud, bullying, but wrong. And so they rejected it. And now the critics within the BMA's council are facing the fallout for that decision. Um, because it does not represent the view of the vast amount of medical people in this country. GPs, junior doctors, consultants, specialists, psychiatrists, psychologists, people in the nursing profession, all of them have said it does not represent their views. They are very much pro the CAS report. They've seen the damage. Um, there was a council member by the name of Jackie Davis, who was a consultant radiologist, and she said that this minority within 
the BMA Council has rode roughshod over this report and has bullied people into voting against it based on emotional argument, not scientific argument. She says it's, it's the, the blocking of the implementation recommended within that report. Uh, and it's, uh, remember, this report took four years to put together. This wasn't just slapped up in a weekend. This is a, a very in-depth, detailed report. They're saying that they're blocking the implementation of the recommendations by Professor Cass. Not because they're wrong, but because they don't like them. They want to continue abusing and sterilising children. And this is not a matter for a trade union because the BMA is just a trade union. This should not be a matter for a trade union to describe, to, to decide whether children are abused or not, whether lives are destroyed or not. This should be much higher. This rejection is a waste of a human life and many of them. Um, and so 1,400 doctors, um, 70 professors, um, and then 23 former and current um, presidents of medical royal colleges have all signed an open letter to the BMA, urging them to reverse their decision and threatening resignation from the BMA, should they not. Uh, there's now been a, a vote, a uh, call, sorry, a call for a vote of no confidence in the board. Um, and I think that if that is put through, there will be a, a win. They vote. They will be voted as no confident. They will all have to resign and then new elections to the board. Now, the BMA has no legal authority or standing over the NHS that still resides with ministers. But they do recommend. However, the NHS says it has no plans to implement the BMA's requests and it will still adhere to the CAS recommendations. But I'm going to put on the back end of that for now, because you have to wonder how the BMA will go up to the ministers and bully the ministers. And we know that this Labour government hasn't got a sack of balls between them. And so the ministers will probably cave and go, oh no, we must destroy children in case some weirdos with some very, very perverted views and degenerate views actually end up not being allowed to destroy and sterilise children en masse. And so they will fold and cave. And that's where it's going to go, isn't it? A Labour Party changing the law to ensure that children can be destroyed. Ah, might as well put them into concentration camps and let the doctors experiment on them. Let me know what you think. Thanks a lot. Goodbye.